and welcome to the latest edition of The Diamond Anvil, Too Hard to Smash, featuring co-host Diamond, a.k.a. David Moriello, and me, co-host smash -a mash We're co-host and co-host. That's why we co-write the show. Although it was this guy's idea, how's it going, Diamond? How was breakfast treating you? I think you're cutting out by, but are you talking? I was muted. I was muted. Oh. <laughs> anyway. We wrote the show. I didn't know why well, we wrote anything. I thought we just made this stuff up. But maybe you write stuff down. No, well, I actually am illiterate. I don't know how to write. <laughs> no, we just we we write That's stuff. That makes me too hard to smash. <laughs> I I think I think we just write stuff by having conversations on Skype, right? Because I go, hey, we haven't we haven't done a video oh, about hey, hey, this hey. or about that, right? Uh, no, nothing so about. My breakfast was amazing. It was a custom so a blueberry sausage with Michigan blueberries, custom stuff, breakfast sausage, <laughs> and two of uh, my farm fresh eggs. Oh. Yeah, it was banging. It was like dessert and oh. salt one. Oh man, the fresh blueberries, huh? Nice. Yeah, pretty nice. In a sausage, I never even heard of such a thing. I think, of course, I want some of those. Somebody just sent it to you, or you bought it, or what was the deal? No, sometimes our market gets custom meats for local uh, processors. So somebody made a whole batch of blueberry breakfast sausage, a local farm, and they had it for sale for a couple weeks. You ah. had to buy a bundle, like a ten-pound bundle, but it was only like twelve bucks. So let's uh, let's talk about let's talk about PPE nightmares. That's that's my that's my favorite topic that that I haven't really covered very much <laughs> on the uh, on the videos yet. So uh, yeah, how, how about a, how about a little bit of PPE nightmare coverage? Um, so you can probably see what's going on on the screen there. That was me yesterday at the end of my day at work, and it's not because I had to wear that stuff. <laughs> it's because. <clears throat> My employer has funny contests sometimes, like wear weird clothes to work. And yesterday's thing was wear crazy pants. So my crazy pants consisted of a full hazmat suit, elastomeric dual filter respirator, goggles, and, you know, the, the whole deal. Ex extra gloves. And uh, <laughs> now I've owned this stuff for ages. Well, I didn't. Go ahead. Tell you about PPE. You know, I, I went down to New Mexico, and where it's mandated that everyone has a Saturday wear masks, and almost nobody had a mask on. Uh, yeah. We went into Albuquerque, which is a big, a big city down there, and there were some stores that had signs on the doors that said "No masks allowed." No. -uh. <laughs> and then we went into the the Presbyterian Hospital downtown Albuquerque, we had to go through multiple screenings just to get in the door, you know, with the thermometer in the head, and, and you shuffle over here, and um, and then you get a sticker if you pass, that you can walk into the building. <laughs> and so we went through all the screenings, and then we had our, our back off, up the hospital. As soon as we get in the hospital, and we meet with the doctor, he's a top doctor uh, in the country, one of the, for this particular specialty, and... and he says, uh, he doesn't have a mask on. He takes it off as soon as we get in the office. And he's like, these the masks, what a crock. And, nice. and so that's my experience. Yes. What's going on in the world. Oh, that's great. I, see, I thought I thought it was like excessively locked down there by order of governor. And sp speaking of New Mexico, um, I don't want to get too in-depth into it, but what's been going on with Ben Davidson? I'm a little worried about that guy. Have you have you seen the stuff? In, in what room? Have you seen the stuff about his what feud with uh, what's that guy? Ask Professor Dave or something. He's he's been in this feud with this guy, and he's gonna get he's gonna get banned. Yeah, what's what is? How, why did it get so out of control? Um, 
because egos are being uh, hurt. Well, once you're an egomaniac and all you care about is your uh, the way people perceive you, then you get very defensive about your ego. And this is something that I've been struggling with my whole life, and I've been trying to detach from my ego because it is the root of all problems. Ah, so yes. He thinks that this imaginary expert, who is the, the guy I looked into, Professor Dave, he was never a professor. He only has an undergraduate degree, so he's just like an average human. And it's, and it's in like, I don't know what it's in, economics or something stupid that's meaningless. And yet he has a million followers or something, and he's talking about science. No, he and has... I don't believe what he says. All he does is the, the articles that the mainstream puts out. He just barfs he says, out mainstream... He has no idea about science. Ex I, yeah, so he I... does. And then he's like, oh, anyone else who says anything different is wrong. And, and so the people that watch him are hopeless. They are so far away from figuring out truth and reality and science that it's a, a, a complete waste of time for someone like... Ben Davidson to, to even begin a fight with such a useless schmuck like Professor Dave. So were you the one? Were you the one that sent me one of his videos? Because I commented on the video because there was cosmology involved, and I, I knew nothing about any of this nonsense when 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 I put up a comment, and uh, it turned ugly yeah. real fast. And I don't know if that was suspicious observers, fans that were commenting, or what the deal was, but. I commented something like I wasn't being rude or anything like that, and it devolved into horrifying comments <laughs> in like in like about a half an hour. The comment thread was not appropriate for for children. <laughs> so here's, here's the tip off. When so professor not professor Dave, the when he posted a debunking of the EU. Now it wasn't really a debunking of EU. It was him. Uh, uh, oh, that's right. That's what it was. I remember now. The main, mainstream narrative. Yeah, yeah. Um, the electric universe now. And he got a lot of the suppositions of EU wrong right from the gate. So right, just yeah. just fact checking, the whole video is useless because he didn't even know the premise of EU. So that's the number one tip that this guy is an idiot. Well, and I don't, so I don't know. Have, and then, so... Ben made a rebuttal to his video, and then he made a secondary personal character attack video again against Ben. So that's how it happened. Boom, boom, boom. One, two, three. Yeah, but then did you did you see the email that got sent? It got real ugly between those guys real fast, because Ben was talking about how his how his his subscribers are going to show up to his place in RL and like, it's dude, it got really bad. Like yeah, I heard I heard that, but. But it, it, I mean, that's the stupidest thing ever. Why would you threaten a non-threatening person? I know. He yes. Yes. He has a great capacity, a peanut, and, and you're threatening him like that. I know. So that's childish. that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. It's a problem. Dude, I, I, I thought it was a lockdown, but like from what you're saying about what it's like in New Mexico, <laughs> maybe I'm wrong. I don't know what's up with it. It's, well, he's got the power on the spring, and that's not not country. So I would not be anywhere near Denver, which is why I'm six hours south of that shithole. Wait a minute. No, Ben Davidson lives by Albuquerque, no? Now he moved last year. He's in Colorado Springs. Okay, well, anyway. Right the, next to NORAD. Anyway, the, the point is. To the earth. The point it's, is, it, it devolved. It devolved into nonsense on both of their sides, and they're, they're both. They're both highly successful YouTube channels that have half a million subs each. There's no like, there's basically no reason for them to even argue, especially considering what you said earlier in that Ben Davidson's publishing textbooks. You know what I mean? It's um, it's yeah, just bizarre. He was, he, he was uh, Professor Dave was unaware of the textbook. He also made a claim that no one uses it when you can go see exactly who's using the textbook. I mean, Professor Gay does not even know how to research because he's an undergraduate shill with a YouTube channel, and he talks, uh, you know, he just talks like a smarmy little know-nothing, and then all of the sheep gobble it up. They're like, gobble, 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 gobble. Well, oh, my God, black holes, gobble, 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 gobble. Yeah, yeah, I know, but it, it, it was weird because my experience was when I commented, I said, 
I started to talk about the implications of condensed matter stars and yada, yada, yada. And uh, I, I put a link to, uh, you know, a, a, certain, a certain article about how condensed matter may explain the, all of cosmology very concisely. And it really wasn't, uh, the response wasn't that crazy. But what happened was some, some idiot intruded on our conversation in the comments thread, and that really helped it to devolve into chaos. <laughs> So I, I don't know. I, I mean, it's um, I think I think like what you said is, is pretty much the case that this guy is just vomiting out and rehashing old, washed up, highly disproven stuff. I just heard a very large insect flying around here inside. Let's hope I'm not being murdered by a hornet right now. It could be, be a murder hornet. Hey, yeah. hey, check this out. I got a great centipede story this morning. This morning, I, I jump in the shower, I turn the shower on, I get in the shower, I see an object tumbling in the water, right? I'm like, oh, what's that? I realized it was a house centipede. So I took a towel, and I turned off the shower and dipped the towel in, and I saved the house centipede. I put it on the ledge by the, by the tub, and I put a little a square of toilet paper there to dry it off to get the soap out of its pores and stuff, and it kind of like, it like eventually like came back to life and crawled off. And I was like, Yes! How centipede survived, you know, because it's a beneficial. You can't call it an insect because it's more like a segmented worm. But amazing animals, not as good as a bald yeah. faced hornet, but amazing animals. Similar to a trilobite. Yeah, and it's it. They're closely related to you know the desert the desert uh, centipedes that people are more familiar with the ones that get to be. I guess 18 inches long in some places. That's kind of their closest living relative, but they're they're actually more closely related to to an earthworm than a thing like an insect because they're nothing like an arthropod, obviously. They're, anyway. uh, they're, uh, I remember them in Pennsylvania. They get about four, five, six inches long, right? Uh yeah. Counting if you count the the front legs and the antenna and stuff, yeah, you know, yeah, maybe like this, like counting all the stuff. If if you if you find a really big one, you don't want that thing running across your face in the middle of the night. So I'm we're pretty good at catching them without like causing them to lose a leg. But even if they do lose a leg, they they still keep carrying on. I think if you if you break them in half half the time, one half runs away. I don't know what happens in that in that case, but I've I've caught some pretty nasty spiders, man. I've been sitting there and seen a spider running across the floor at about twelve miles per hour, and. <laughs> Had a had a glass or something that I can trap it for a minute before putting that thing outside so it can do some serious damage to all the bug population. It's uh it's it's biological yeah, so warfare. So real quick, the millipede is a group of arthropods that are characterized by having two pairs of jointed legs on most of the body segments. They're known scientifically as the class Diplopoda. Not millipedes. Centipedes, totally different. Millipedes. We're talking centipedes. Here, hold on. You, oh, centipedes. Yeah, you see the you see the um, you see the screen, right? Yeah. House centipede. Scutigera coleoptrida. Yeah, so the, These things. So the only difference. Uh, between a millipede and a centipede is the fork it pulls. And they're both chylopoda, both arthropoda, but the centipede is subphylum myriapoda, which also as a group concludes millipedes. So oh, does it? Okay. they're very closely related. Okay. Yeah. That's weird. Except, cause... except that some have, inject, some have tensors and venomous in, and can venomously inject venom. Most centipedes, where millipedes are harmless, the centipede is a killer. Yeah, and this, this animal here, this is what I saved from the shower today. This animal here has one of the deadliest venoms of any animal, but its, it's, uh, it's mouth parts are insufficient to pierce human skin. So it's, it's totally harmless to you. Yeah. But, but these things will eat earwigs like there's no tomorrow. I mean, look at that thing. It's freaking awesome. <laughs> It's Lithobias fornicatus. 
Isn't that crazy? That's the genus and species. Not of the house centipede. Oh, no, that's the... Oh, that, that's what I thought it was. I mean, uh, it's scu- what's the genus and species of yours? It's scut- Scutigera coleoptrata. Oh, nice. Scutigera coleoptrata. I wish I could see where I'm looking at. It's pretty similar. Well, well you could... There are 8,000 could... species of centipedes thought to exist, only 3,000 of which have, have been described. I mean, there are 5,000 species waiting for you to find. And yeah. these babies just go all the way from the equator to the Arctic, so they're everywhere. Yep. And the, the, the really large ones that live in the desert, you know, at, and those look totally different than the house centipede. Uh, they, they, they are capable of, of uh, doing some damage. They, they also have venom. I don't know if they're very likely to kill an adult or anything like that. But uh, other, you know, the, the, the larger desert species of centipedes are pretty, uh, you don't want to mess with them. But these things are harmless. They, they cannot bite you. So, I, I, guess, I guess like ounce for ounce the venom is... There is a tropical version. Yeah, there's a tropical version that's cave-dwelling and subterranean. Uh, so there's multiple versions. But they, they can get up to 12 inches. And the, 12, the big ones are called scolopendromorphs. So that's a word I never heard of. Nice. Scolopendromorphs. And... And imagine seeing a 12-inch centipede as yeah. you're, if you're walking down the trail. That's got to be crazy. That's worth the whole video. I know, right? Yeah, large, large, uh, large animals with skele- with exoskeletons are, are pretty uh, intense. Imagine if there was a imagine if there was like an ant that 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 weighed three pounds. Imagine how much imagine how much oh. mass an ant that weighs three pounds would be able to move. It would be it would like be able to like. Cut cut through your car and stuff. Yeah, he, if you encounter, if you didn't know you stepped on an anthill, your leg could get bitten off. Chomp. Yeah. For, fortunately, back in the in the Precambrian and stuff, I guess we had we had giant dragonflies, but there's not a lot of evidence of of any like really scary bugs. Although, if a dragonfly with a two foot wingspan landed on your on you, you would definitely notice. Well, I mean, some of them are estimated to have four-foot wingspans. Due oh, jeez. Could you imagine so how much wind? <laughs> a four-foot wingspan. Okay, so hey, let's um, let's let's shift let's shift topics here and talk about bio yeah. bug out bags. I've got a bio bug out bag. So if if you too want to look like this. And be a full-fledged COVID idiot. And keep in mind, there is a use for this, and I've owned this kind of stuff for decades. Because, uh, well, first of all, I bought this kind of mask because I used to do hardwood flooring. So I, I needed this kind of mask to keep all the dust and other chemicals out of my face and lungs. Um, so, so anyway, this elastomeric mask that I have here... Uh, I've owned these for, for decades as well as hazmat suits and all that stuff because of doing construction tasks. But recently, because of current events, I've decided to get a bag. Now, I know you're not going to be able to see this very well because of the color keying, and I'm not going to change the color keying just for this, but I've got this messenger bag here. And what I've done is I've dedicated this as a bio, a bio bug out bag. So the two main compartments are dedicated to two things. Now, here, here's the scenario. If a sarin gas bomb or a mustard gas bomb or a VX nerve agent bomb goes off right outside and blows the wall of the house off and doesn't hurt me badly enough that I can't do this, I will just simply open up this bag and I will pull out this mask, pull it out of the Ziploc bag, take everything off of my head, Hold my breath, put on the mask. Make sure that it is airtight. I can't see you. If this is supposed to be on the video, you, you're not, it's not visible. No, you have a picture of you off, just a still of you. I know you can't see it. See, there I am. It's on there, don't worry. All right, there you go. So you put the okay. mask on, you make, sure, you make sure it's airtight. Both the inhale and the exhale... And then you're good. You just take out the rest of your 
your gear in a separate bag, hazmat suit, goggles, and gloves. And you are good to go. It should take you less than two minutes to put it on, but you gotta train to do so. And that is how you do the bio bug out bag. It's very simple. Just get one of these kind of elastomeric masks, which is the main, most important thing. It'll cost you about 50 bucks, including the cartridges, depending on what kind of cartridges you buy. But if you want real protection, where you could survive an actual bioweapon attack with modern bioweapons, that's what you need. Now, you're better off having one like the, the masks that are featured in Breaking Bad, where the mask and goggles are one piece. But I like to keep my components separate, because this way, when one component breaks down, the other components still function. So anyway, I just wanted to share that with everybody because uh, I haven't put that in one of one of the other videos and I figured the diamond anvil was an appropriate time to uh, to put it on there. Yeah. Now I know you have you have a uh, uh, what like 80 N95 masks. But that's yeah. a that's in a whole different category to this because this this uh, this 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 this, fi this filters out these type of cartridges that I have here, these filter out all, um, what do you call it, all organic compounds. So, you know, all of the, the basic nerve agents and so on should be filtered out by this kind of mask. There may be stuff that's more advanced that it doesn't filter yeah. out. Who the hell knows? It's not, it's, these are not NBC cartridges, uh, but for instance, I could operate 16 hours in a full diesel fuel environment with that setup. Yeah, I have a setup like that, but the, the one thing we should point out is that even N95 masks do not block all coronavirus. So coronaviruses are smaller than the minimum aperture on, uh, on an N95 mask. So they, they would actually just pass through that mask. And then if you had it, a lot of the N95 masks have that front plastic nugget. That's a, that's a quick-release vent for your exhale. So you would actually be inhaling the coronavirus through the mask, N95, even though you have it on. Right, And if yep. you had it, you'd be exhaling a con concentrated stream of it out of the vent. Right. So wearing the mask is completely idiotic for covid only and sick people or doctors that are over some patient that's infected that may spit in his eye. So that's the only two people that should wear a mask. So if you're walking around the general public with a mask on, you've been duped and... And, and it's unconstitutional. They can't even... So let's talk about New Mexico. The sheriffs are interviewed, and they're like, we're not going to stop anyone without a mask. Are you kidding me? Yes. Like, we're we're going to bark out of the window. Ah, they would be telling a million people to do that. So they're not getting involved. So even though there are states that mandate you have to wear these in masks, you don't have to wear them. Now... In a place of business that mandates them, you got to suck it up and put that on, or you right. just can't go in there and shop. Agreed. So I'm going to not shop in any of those stores that mandate masks, if I can. So that's what I would suggest everyone do. Yep, and it will be nice, but uh, it's let me tell you, it's very different there than it is here, because here, every convenience store, every grocery, literally every place of business in Pennsylvania, due to people like Tom Wolf and Dr. Rachel Levine, who other people are calling to be fired now, uh, have mandated us to wear masks everywhere. So it's, um, people are, let's just say they're getting a little bit, uh, angry about it. So it's, it's going to end soon. It's going to end soon one way or the other. And, uh, some of us are trying to accelerate it and some other COVID idiots are trying to decelerate it. And those people are looking dumber and dumber. I saw a Facebook post today that said, all of these people that want things to reopen are sickening. And then I vomited on my phone and I wiped it off and I said, nothing. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's another paper came out uh, and the CDC even announced this. that The, the COVID-19 virus does not linger on surfaces and it's probably not transmitted that way. Yep. So all of the millions and billions of dollars of wiping down shit and all the panic. And, and do you think that the complete waste of time, on energy news, and money, like a news screen. And so it, as the evidence comes to the forefront, 
um, people are going to get upset. And so I think we're headed towards a really fun time in our near near future. Yeah, there there are a lot of issues, and I think there are a lot of COVIDiots that are going to be held responsible for their COVIDiacy. So, and for that, we thank them because uh, yeah. they they need to be held responsible it, because it, it is some BS, man. Uh, so I mean, talk about so ineffective you know, measures. We have, we, uh, we have like some, you think it's like a little more, less lenient out here, which is true, but there's only a few hundred people that even ever had it or that are in the hospital currently. No, more lenient. Uh, and, yeah, but, but there are certain factions out here that lean a little left, like our farmer's market group called the State Southwest on Sustainability. The farmer's market this year... Uh, so it, down in Durango, the farmer's market is just normal with the regular, you know, wear a mask or don't or do whatever you want, social distance. Okay. But, um, but here, we're going to we're gonna have a drive-through farmer's market where everyone has to stay in their car. We have the dumbest idea I ever heard of. I don't know how you would look at the produce or pick anything. <laughs> uh, just it's, it's so stupid. And like you have this big line of cars down the road. I mean, I don't even know how it's going to work. That sounds like insanity. Um, yeah, so yeah. check this one out. Uh, Pennsylvania liquor stores have reopened. And, uh, you know, I drink a bit. I don't get too excessive with it. I know you're anti-alcohol, but check, check out this story. I went to one of the liquor stores, right? And here was the process I had to do to buy a bottle of vodka. The process was I had to go to the Pennsylvania LCB website I had to download a PDF document that was 30 pages long that was like a graphic of, of all of the PA liquor stores by county. Then I had to figure out what county I was in, and I won't disclose that for security purposes. And then once I figured out which county I was in, I had to figure out which store it was. And then I had to call the store three times because the, the line was busy. And then when I finally got through, the store answered and and said, "Oh, hello. Uh, please uh, give us your name and number so that we can call you back for your curbside delivery." And I said, "Okay, here's my name, number." She's like, "Last name?" And I'm like, uh, "Okay, here's my last name." And then she gives me these instructions, like, "We ask you to stay in your car and yada yada yada." So I'm like, "Okay, I'm in the parking lot right now, like literally looking at the store." And I'm like, I was just going to walk there. And she's like, well, we ask that you stay in your car. I'm like, okay. So I drive up. I drive up. And a local police officer walks out. And I hand my ID to the police officer who takes it inside and scans it. Because you got to know which COVID idiots are buying the booze. And which ones aren't buying the booze. Because I, I must be tracked at all costs. And then <laughs> and then um, I'm like, all right, cool. And then I, I guess I, I think I handed. Well, they may, they may need that vodka for hand sanitizer, right? So but the cop, have to come confiscate that. the cop did the transaction though. It was like a local municipal cop, and the cop did the transactions. I handed the cop the ID. I handed the cop my visa. The cop went in, like the employees scanned it. The cop came out with the booze. It was insane. I was like, what? Did the so cop that's... have? Did the cop have a mask on and gloves? Um. Yeah, I think the cop had a mask on and tactical gloves. It sounded it, it was like a woman from Eastern Europe. It was it was amazing. It was amazing. I was like, oh hey, hey, thanks, thanks for your service there. She she's like, she's getting paid as a consultant by the PALCB. The PALCB is paying the police to work as a go-between between the liquor store and the populace. Because the liquor store, I guess because Tom Wolf is such a COVID idiot is afraid to interact with the populace. So you get, <laughs> and how about this one? I went to a McDonald's a few weeks ago and guess what? Had to wear a mask in a drive through baby. Yeah. Woo. Mask in the drive through Fortunately, I had one with me. Wasn't expecting that, but that was a thing. Oh, and I had, I, I had to wear a mask at the liquor store too. Like to go up, I had to wear a mask. Fuck that. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hey, that's that's the best way you could ever shotgun a bowl or a joint by by having a legit gas mask, right? Yeah, 
smoke things. Yeah. <laughs> I saw a guy who made, I just saw a video on uh, Facebook where a guy took a yard, a leaf blower and mounted a bowl on the top. Okay. And, and got like a whole tent filled with smoke. Oh my gosh. That yeah, that's a, uh, I once, I once wrote up a blueprint for a house where the, the basement had like a toaster elements on the one side and then it ha had a hydraulic press. You could fill the whole basement up and then there was a system of tubes that went up where you just open a tube and then whatever room you were in, you know, it would just compress against the wall. I shouldn't tell anybody about that. Somebody's going to design a house that way. It had a giant air freshener on the chimney. Anyway, so... Uh, I'm going to go plant some trees. Let's wrap it up. What are you going to plant? What kind of trees? I have honey locusts, about 30 of them to go in today. These, they're nitrogen fixers. We're oh, also cool. going to plant some Mennonite sorghum uh, as a windbreak. Nice. Let's see how that does. Okay. And, and I've got some a Asian poppies that I want to get in the ground. I and like we locusts. Have about 100 vegetable starts that are... That we needed to put in there. It's some of the honey hardest. It's great because it's a, a, a permaculture tool. It's a, it's so a, as the honey locust tree grows, you cut back the branches and then the roots in the ground die back a certain amount and fix nitrogen. So oh, okay, it's a tree fertilizer. Cool. It, it's interesting because I've actually uh, transplanted a locust here because we have a sunburst locust in the front yard, and one just grew because it seeded someplace, and I put it someplace else because I thought it would grow good. So I, I, I've actually transplanted one of those. It's They are cool trees. I didn't know... That, I mean, I'm, I'm sure all the locusts are probably nitrogen fixers, not just the honeys, but the... Um, no, they're all, all locusts are, are legumous trees. And, and cool. And legumous trees are in the pea family, and they are... They fix nitrogen, baby. Oh, wow. I, 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 have, to, I have to send you a photo of the one that I transplanted. So anyway, yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's shut it down yeah. and... Yeah, get... Another excellent nitrogen fixer is cannabis. A lot of people don't know that. It's one of the best nitrogen fixers, which also includes hemp. There should be giant the fields of it. was legal. Yeah. It's all going legal. If our soils on Earth were getting better. Let's hope so. It's going legal, man. It's going legal. Don't worry. Everything, I think, uh, I think the solutions are going to outweigh the problems pretty soon. All right, let's do this again soon. All right, man. Talk to you soon and look for the video going up. It'll, it'll look better when it's up than it does from your perspective now because we we can't share everything until it's... Because, uh, you know, you got to watch your own content, right? Yeah. you got to uh, be like an nice. editor of yourself because if you say something weird, you got to be like, hey, editor's note, I said something backwards or something, right? All right, talk to you soon. All right, man. Cheers.